Thank you very much. My name is Mary Beth Tinker, and I'm a registered nurse, and I'm here today speaking for thousands of nurses and health professionals around the country and the world who abhor the torture and forced feedings of prisoners and Guantanamo prisoners. Now, Andre is following in a proud tradition of people through history that have been willing to endure forced feedings, suffragettes, abolitionists, to take a stand against injustice. So thank you, Andre. Do you agree to be force-fed? No. no. Do you agree to be force-fed? No. We're gonna feed you whether you agree or not. No. Get in the chair. Andre is being restrained so that he will be forced to have a tube shoved down his nose. I'm gonna give you a last chance. Do you agree to be force-fed? Into his esophagus. And they will try to avoid pushing the tube through the cribriform plate, which goes to the brain, which I have seen an x-ray of a tube that missed the esophagus and went instead straight up and through into the brain. So there are numerous risks associated with this painful, unpleasant procedure, even when it's done consensually with the permission of the patient. And I've done it myself many, many times in the emergency room, in the nursing hall, in the nursing homes on the medical surge floors, and even in the premature nursery Last with the chance. babies. Do you agree to be force-fed? We don't want to do this. That government is telling us to do it, and we're going to follow procedure. Do you agree or not? I will not be force-fed. Doctor. At this point, there are a number of health care precedents against exactly this kind of treatment of patients. Patients should never have procedures done to them against their will. And when you go into a hospital, you can expect that these kinds of procedures will not be done against your will. They should never be done against your will. And there's a long line of human rights precedent that stands for that. And that's why nurses and health professionals are protesting, are standing up, are writing articles in the Journal of, of Medicine against exactly this procedure because we refuse to take part in this. We refuse to take part in torture, as healthcare professionals have through history, and as we are today all over the country and all over the world, taking a stand, and our nurses' organizations are speaking up about torture and forced feedings, prisoners being forced to have feedings, Guantanamo prisoners being held without charge for 10 years and more and then tortured so that they don't even have control over their own bodies, their own digestive systems, their own cells, their own tissues. This is an outrage for Americans and for people all over the world who love human rights and who care about the humane treatment of people. Right now, they're securing Andre so that he can't move because if he should grab the tube or thrash around, it could do even more damage to the capillaries, to the vessels that this tube will be passing through. And when the capillaries break, which is undoubtable, it's, it's, it's almost unavoidable in a tube feeding, that you're going to have some breakage of the capillaries, the small blood um, veins that are in the nose, the throat. But if he thrashes around, it can be even worse. And that's maybe why you've seen the pictures of bloody tubes pulled from the noses of prisoners who've been forced to have tube feedings because there's a lot of tissue there that has a very healthy blood supply and he'll be losing that and this tube is going to be threaded into the nose asking him to swallow something to it as he points the tube, he's trying to make it not go into the brain, not go through the cribriform plate, but to go straight down, which is why he's trying to point it downward towards the esophagus, towards the belly, instead of pointing it up towards the brain, where it can go through the cribriform plate to the brain. And we've seen x-rays of this. I saw one myself in the emergency room when I worked there as an example to nurses and doctors. Right now, he's, they're holding him down, trying to force it past the mucus, past the sensitive tissue of your nose, 
into the esophagus, holding him. He's suffering. He's this is all being done completely against his will. It's an outrage. This is a crime against health professionals and patients all over the world. It's a crime against human rights. It's going on right now today, and our country is responsible. Oh, Are you sure it's not in my lungs? Well, I mean, you breathing? No. Right now, he's probably having some difficulty oh, even catching his breath because the tube is the size of the nostril. It's sometimes hard to breathe while this is going on because everything tenses up. You reject the foreign object of the tube going into your nose and they put some Vaseline on there, some lube to try to make it slide down the nose easier. But it's really hard to avoid the breakage of the capillaries and the resistance of your tissues to the foreign tube going in. Now they're sucking it to see if there's any testing to see if they have it in the right place or maybe it landed in the lungs instead of into the belly into the stomach and the esophagus there's always a chance it can go into the lungs so that when you start feeding the liquid feeding could go into the lungs and just this last weekend i was testing that in a little premature baby to make sure i'm not pouring tube feeding into the lungs so right now the doctor is trying to establish he's listening to the belly with his stethoscope to see when he pushes on the syringe of the tube and pushes air into the tube, into the belly, does he hear gurgling put that mic down. in the belly, which is a reassuring sign that the tube is in the right place and not in the lungs. Because the tube feeding, when you pour tube feeding into the lungs, you die. You can easily die of aspiration pneumonia. Uh, Andre, Andre, how does it feel? Down. It's unbearably painful right in the in the core of my throat. Uh, it's in the right place. God, it feels like it's in my lungs. Move it. Don't move it. Don't move it. Okay, don't move it. Don't move it. Please don't move it. Oh my god. The prisoners don't even speak English. They can't even tell the the torturers how they feel. And at least they're not intentionally trying to harm me and it feels horrible. It feels in, insanely painful. It, I, it feels, oh God. Do you feel like throwing up? Do you feel nauseated? Yeah. It's not an uncommon feeling when you have a tube slammed down your nose into your stomach. Are you sure it's in my stomach, Doctor? Yes, we confirmed it. I think of those prisoners whose, whose lungs were pierced by the tubes going in their lungs. And this is being done by friendly doctors and I've agreed to do this. And I can't imagine what it would be like to be not wanting to do this and to resist and to, and to shake my head right now and to feel the excruciating pain any motion I make. Every word I speak is painful. So we're going to head and get this uh, liquid food. And it's hard to swallow. No, no, I can't swallow anymore. Any motion is painful. <laughs> All motion is painful. Dude, All motion on. is painful. And it's very humiliating to have your body taken over and to have procedures done to you that are not something that you agree to. Dude, uh, what are you doing? Uh, 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 oh, God. It feels like I'm drowning. Uh, Oh, I had no idea it would be this, this horrible. Well, you can imagine what my buddies are going oh. through right now that's being force fed like this every day. Oh. All my friends are being force fed like this oh. every day. This is a six millimeter tube. Oh. The one that they use is 10 millimeters. Oh. It's larger than the one that we're using today. Oh. Oh. 
Do you still feel like you're drowning? Do you feel... How does it feel, Andre? I can't speak because every word is too painful. Can't speak because every word is too painful. If I, if I try to swallow, I can feel the tube. I can feel like three inches of the tube up and down my throat. And so every swallow that I would take would be horrific. And, and I have the urge to, to the urge to, to vomit and yet. Uh, it's very well known that your psychological state is very related to pain. And when you're being forced and you're in pain, it just makes it all the worse. Right now they're pouring the liquid nutrition into the syringe. It drips by gravity slowly down the tube, through Andre's nose, down through his esophagus. If you opened his mouth right now very wide, you could see the tube along the back of the throat. In fact, sometimes we look and see those there, and then the, it drips down into his stomach. Yo, microphone down in front. Can you, can you taste anything? No, but I can feel the pain if I try to swallow. If you try to swallow, so you're trying to not swallow. Imagine not swallowing for a few minutes, how that would feel, especially when you're having liquid poured down your throat. And you're trying to avoid swallowing because of the pain and discomfort. The, the mic, man, the mic. It's been five minutes so far, just trying to get eight ounces down into his belly. Holding you down. Can you put this? Normally, he'd be surrounded by several police, the military. When this procedure happens in prison, there are like eight guys holding you down, and they're not as nice as what's going on now. So we're talking about almost taking 10 minutes to get eight ounces of fluid down. Normally it would take less than two seconds. Push it. If you push it, the doctor said. Andre, do you want to say something? My plan was to continue to be in solidarity with the prisoners who suffer this torture every day. I can't tell you in this moment whether I will be able to or not. But I know I will continue fasting. It's been 61 days on water only, and now I get a little bit of nutrition. I hope it lasts a long time, because I don't want to repeat this anytime soon. That's right, bro. And they get this twice a day, every day. And that, to me, is unimaginable. It's absolutely unimaginable. I think we should have a national nonviolent insurrection. Yes. 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 We need to rise up to stop this torture. Yes. Yes. I am living it in my bones and in my blood and in my breath right now. President Obama, stop the torture now. You have the power to stop this force feeding down, down. now. You do not have to wait for the Congress to authorize anything. You are the commander in chief. Give the order. Stop the force feeding now. 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 We're asking all healthcare professionals to pledge non-compliance 
with forced feedings, with torture. There are many human rights conventions against this and many precedents for healthcare professionals not to be involved in treatments that abuse patients, that go against their wishes. I'm representing today thousands. They just yanked out the tube, which is, can be almost as uncomfortable as when it goes in. And it can be done in such a way that's even more painful if the guards and military choose to make it like that. And it leaves the nose with a raw feeling, with slight trauma to the capillaries, to the, to the blood dripping a little bit. Or more, depending on how it was done, and with how much force and how much trauma. How do you feel, Andre? Oh. It felt like endless agony. I, I, I had no clue. I had this procedure done to me 15 years ago. For It was an endoscopy. It's where they put the camera down into your stomach. So it's, it wasn't a feeding, but they did have to put the tube inside through my nose. And at that time, I, I, I had the, the urge to vomit again. And the doctor was brutal. He was not at all caring. It, it, it was very, very sad the way he treated me. And he was insulting me for wanting to have a gag reflex, but it's the only thing my body could do. Mm -hmm. Right now I can swallow and it's healing for me to swallow, but any swallow that I did, I could feel the tube all up and down my throat and it would just aggravate it and cause pressure and cause deep pain. And when he pulled it out, it was even painful. It was excruciating and I had no idea that was gonna be so painful. And to imagine that this happens twice a day and that every one of us listening and every one of us watching is probably helping to pay for this. Think of it. Think of your dollars going for this torture. It makes each one of us complicit. Please escalate your resistance. Escalate and become more creative in your nonviolence and bring this to an end. Pressure President Obama to stop this torture. Go to the Go to the website, closedgitmo.net, or go to orangeribbons.net, and please join us to help stop this madness, please. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you. Let's